Tarot Decoded, Raziel's Interpretation, New Extended Edition by Grant Isaac. This is Chapter 19 and will be recorded in two parts. Chapter 19, The Two Keys Hidden Within the Tarot. Found on the Hierophant card are two keys, which are located and displayed on the Hierophant's platform. These two keys are the only keys in the symbol in the entire Rider Waite Smith tarot deck, and because of this, they hold great importance that should not be overlooked. Essentially, these keys unlock one desires. The platform he sits upon can be looked at at being somewhat of a treasure chest, and keys unlock it. The Hierophant acts as a bridge or middleman between you and what which you desire. He will help you manifest such desires and make your wishes come true. These two keys are hidden within the tarot deck. One is found in the centre of the tarot grid and the other is found within the major arcana cards. The key found inside the tarot grid holds the secret to manifesting wishes and I refer to it as the prosperity key. It utilises a more practical approach towards manifesting. The key hidden with the major arcana holds a secret, a guided meditation, to raising the kundalini, otherwise known as one, a person's chakra system that starts at the base of the spine leading up to the third eye, elevating the soul's vibration as the energy ascends, eventually connecting a person to the higher self. As one raises their spiritual awareness and beginning, begin working on themselves, they gradually shed off layers of limiting beliefs and eventually go of their previously held identity, thus reaching enlightenment. It is imperative to note that the Kundalini key must be used first before using the prosperity key. The Kundalini must first be elevated in order for a person to be able to connect with the source where their desire is located and from which such desire can be accessed and drawn down into the manifest. In other words, the tarot practitioner must first raise their vibration and consciousness in order to reach the meditative state needed to be able to draw down their desire and manifest it into their reality. Moving forward, it's important to also know that these both two keys consist of 10 cards each and coincide with the 10 sephira on the Kabbalah Tree of Life. Each card within these keys share a specific energy aspect with one of the trees, Sephira, relating to Kabbalistic wisdom and or planetary influences. For instance, the first key, the Kundalini key, which includes only major arcana cards, 10 cards in a precise order, all aligning with the 10 Sephira on the tree of life and in accordance with their specific planetary influences. While the prosperity keys 10 cards align with the Zum Zum lightning bolt found in the tarot card, in the tarot grid, which is also based on the energy influences of the Ten Sephira, but in a more practical sense. In order for you to understand these concepts better, allow me to first explain the Kundalini key in detail. This key starts out with the judgment card, placing it in number one position in the ten card layout, at Keta, which is the first Sephira on the ten. Both Keta and the Judgment coincide with Pluto. This method of placement sets in motion the key's key layout, which reflects upon the planetary correspondence shared between the Tarot and the Tree of Life's Ten Sephira. Moving forward, the second card in the layout is the Hanged Man, located at Hokma, associated with Neptune, and then the World Card at Binar, associated with Saturn. Followed by the Wheel, Wheel of Fortune at Hesed, which is associated with Jupiter. Then the Tower at Gavura, which is associated with Mars. Next is the Sun card at Tiferet, which is associated with the Sun. The Justice card is placed at Netzach, which is associated with Venus. Temperance card is placed at Hod, which is associated with Mercury. The Devil card is placed at Yesod, reflecting aspects of the moon's influence, connecting it to the idea of how the moon unveils secrets which are hidden in plain sight, as well as how the moon grants us the opportunity to tap into the magic of the astral plane. And lastly, we complete this layout with the star located at Malkut, because both are associated with Earth, 
These 10 major arcana form the Kundalini key, which is a key to raise your consciousness and your chakras in order to connect with the higher self, where self-awareness, enlightenment and a connection to the source can be obtained. Further explanation for each of these planetary connections will be revealed momentarily, but first I must explain certain esoteric and Kabbalistic concepts that led me to formulate these tarot card connections. Bear with me as I unravel this puzzle in the simplest way possible so that you too may be able to decipher all of this for yourself when attempting to follow the same steps. What's interesting about the tree of life is that it has its roots at the top of the tree and then draws down its energy from the source. The Keta into the human vessel. Subsequently, the Kundalini key shares an accord with this concept. The key starts out at Keta with judgment and from here leads down and traverses throughout the Sephiro, eventually ending at the star in Malkut, at the base of the tree. Upon reaching Malkut, this life force or light energy forms in the shape of the vessel, thus stimulating the Sephira and giving structure to the tree of life within, creating a map of the soul. At this point, all ten Sephira are stimulated and vibrating on a higher frequency. Once the Sephira are charged, ego blockages surrounding them are released. The vessel has now cleared the space needed in order for the light to be drawn down into it once again and thus the vessel now transformed into becoming a pure channel for the light. As the light enters the vessel from above, it stimulates the tree's 22 branches as it traverses down along through each of the sephiro once again. Picture a dirty wine glass as the human vessel. The light, like water, enters the glass and cleanses it, preparing it for the wine to be poured in. The light, visualised now as being pure water, pours down into the glass and transforms itself into wine as the vessel fills up. From the Tree of Life diagram, we can see that there are ten spheres, also known as sephira, with nine spheres above and one at the very furthest point below. The last sphere corresponds to the earth, the material world of Malkut, a dimension which has no light of its own. Malkut, beyond the upper nine spheres, is the endless, limit, endless, infinite light force of the Creator, a force of goodness and love and unfathomable and incomprehensible to the finite mind. The upper nine spheres are emanations full of the Creator's light, the highest levels of pure energy. Despen descending from energy to matter, from above downward, each level becomes denser, until we reach the realm of physicality or the world of matter. One above Malkut is the level of Yesod, which is the funnel that gathers the light from the upper spheres of pure energy and releases it to Malkut. Yesod is like a straw, the suction that pulls all the light from the upper dimensions through Yesod to Malkut is created by the consciousness of humanity. We all draw the light down through the spiritual structure into the physical dimension with our desire. As we draw to us which we desire, if our desire is clear and tuned to light, we draw light and are the cause for illuminating this world. This process creates the tree's energy flow and is sustaining and its sustaining current. Similar to how a sugar maple tree goes through its yearly cycle of drawing in water from its roots, drawing in sustenance, minerals and nutrients, eventually producing its own sap that is transported up the tree from its roots into its leaves. This process occurs yearly, when, yearly as winter turns into spring, and when the sap runs dry the process starts all over again, every year. This concept of rejuvenation can be seen metaphorically in the Kundalini Keys card layout, where the star card at Malkut depicts the Virgin Isis, who it acts as a pure channel for the light as she draws in the energy from the astral waters and fills her vessel, metaphorical human vessel, which gives her the sustenance she needs to elevate her soul's vibration. This energy ascends up the tree of life within the human soul, like a flash of lightning, to the judgment card located at Keta, where we see the people rising up and out of their coffins, awakening and returning back to life. 
These people rise and rejoice with a new breath of life, just as the water from the roots of the maple tree transform into sap. Notice how the coffins are floating in water. This is the melted ice from the snowy mountain tops seen in the background of the card. When compared to the sugar maple, this card can be seen as portraying the end of winter cycle, when the days are getting longer and winter is turning into spring. The sun has melted the snow and flooded the valley below, causing the coffins to rise up from the ground. The major arcana cards, including the Kundalini key, are arranged in a perfect order that correspond to the particular planet assigned to each of the spheres on the Tree of Life. Learning each card's planetary association is key to understanding the reasoning for the card placements involved here. These important connections will be explained in each of the steps below. Knowing the planetary connections is the glue that holds this key together and the cornerstone to the understanding the significance herein. The Kundalini Key Beginning at the root of the Tree of Life is the Sephira Keta, which represents the source of pure divine light, pure nothingness, and the intelligence of the Creator, the realm of pure potential. It is here we find the first card, Judgment. Judgment. The first card in the Kundalini Key, the Judgment card, is placed at Keta, representing the soul's desire and contains the intention for using this key. Depicted in this card is the Archangel Gabriel, who is blowing her trumpet and grabbing the people's attention just before delivering them a warm and heartfelt message. The message is something that gives the people reason to rejoice and to wake up and rise up out of their coffins of limitation. It is a powerful message that sparks life into them, giving them reason to live, and offer them hope. Gabrielle informs the people that Christ will sacrifice himself on the cross the following day, which offers them a chance at redemption, an opportunity for them to repent for their sins. Because of Christ's sacrifice, they can now be saved. Gabrielle's trumpet creates a specific sound to raise their consciousness and elevate their spiritual vibration with its angelic frequency. Each chakra has its own unique tone, and we can recreate those tones within us. We begin to raise our chakras and elevate our kundalini spiritual vibration. As a consequence of this, we align or harmonize with the same frequency as the Creator. These people pictured in the judgment card with their hands raised upward are reaching out and connecting to God, their source of joy and happiness. By tapping into the source, the light, one is able to receive epiphany, godly insight, intuition, and clarity of gnosis. Thus, achieving wisdom from the higher self. As portrayed here, the people are coloured grey, and grey throughout the tarot always connects to and represents wisdom. Therefore, it is the wisdom they have obtained, and the newly learned truth that sets them free. The Hebrew letter assigned to this card is Shin, meaning tooth. Comparable to the Kundalini serpent poison tooth, it is the serpent's tooth you must get bitten with in order to kill off the personality you once identified yourself with. Essentially referring to an ego death, which is needed before one can uni be unified with the cosmic consciousness. This letter looks down this letter looks like a crown, which is just so happens to be the meaning of the Hebrew word. Keta. Heartwarming messages are not always easily to digest at first. They seem to catch us unaware, usually coming from out of nowhere. When we first hear it, truth is not always easy to understand. We are caught off guard, causing us to question our beliefs. For some, truth can be a hard pill to swallow. The letter Shin advises us to chew on it. The longer we chew on it, the easier it is for us to swallow, digest and understand. Truth will set you free, but only if you allow it by welcoming it into your heart. Moreover, Shin is the middle letter for the divine name of God, Yeshua, meaning salvation. The four-letter name of God, known as the Tetragrammaton, is yod heh vau -Hey, and once the letter Shin is added into the middle, the five letters form the name yod -Hey sh yeshua -Hey vau -Hey, the name of Christ, Yeshua. 
Both the judgment card and the letter Shin connect us to the energy of the Christ consciousness, which connects us to the all-knowing where we gain salvation from ignorance. The letter Shin is shaped like a tooth and can be seen as a crown with fiery flames, similar to a three-candled candelabra. Also interesting to note is that the, letter, the letter's shape mimics the structure of the human heart. As portrayed in the judgment card, it is the warming of the heart that melts ice-capped mountains, which floods the valley below and causes the coffins to rise up from the ground. Some may not realize it, but there is a hidden letter Shin on the full card, located on the bottom right of the fool's shirt. The full card is assigned to the Hebrew letter Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The Hebrew word for fire is Aleph Shin, and for this reason it is now apparent why the fool has the fire within him. And he begins his journey full of heart and drive like a ray of sunlight. The staff the fool is carrying is directly in line with one of the um, sun's rays behind his head, representing that of the fool himself is also a sun ray. The fool shoots out, springs forward and lights up the world, unconditionally sharing his light with all. Furthermore, this gives suggestion to the energy of Jesus Christ and to the concept of Christ consciousness. The addition of Shin to yod heh vau -Hey yields Yeshiva, which can be referred to as the Christ manifested. The letter Shin is often inscribed on the case containing a mezua, a scroll of parchment with biblical text written on it. The text contained in the mezua is the Shema Yisrael prayer, which calls the, le calls the Israelites to love their God with all their heart, soul and strength. The mezuzah is situated on the door frames in a home or establishment. The Shem, Shema Yisrael prayer also commands the Israelites to write God's commandments on their hearts. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 6. The shape of the letter Shin mimics the structure of the human heart. The lower, larger left ventricle, which supplies the full body, and the smaller right ventricle, which supplies the lungs, are positioned like the lines of the letter Shin. The mezuzah blesses one as they enter through the doorway and also as they leave. This concept is embodied within the fool, who can be seen in two ways. One where he is starting out on a new journey, or another scenario where he is seen upon his arrival as he returns back home from one. Because of this, the fool is assigned the Roman numeral zero, which is a 360 degree circle. Interesting to point out is that the word shin, when spelled out, equals a gematria value of 360, alluding to the idea of how one returns after a long spiritual journey, full circle, and unites as one with the source. Thus becoming at one with the Creator, just as Jesus Christ was united with the Father upon his crucifixion. The judgment card is associated with the planet Pluto. Pluto is the ruling planet over Keta, further reinstating the deeper connection that it has to its position at the top of number one placement of the Kundalini key. The judgment card placed at Keta represents the desire to obtain Christ consciousness achieved after elevating the kundalini thereby connecting one to the endless realm where they unite with the source the divine light the hanged man the key second card is the hanged man positioned at the second sephira hokma both the hanged man and hokma are associated with the planet neptune the hanged man is assigned to the Hebrew letter Mem, meaning water, and has the numerical value of 40. The number 40 has a great significance in the Kabbalah. It relates to a certain level of consciousness obtained when a person begins to understand deeper spiritual concepts. Containing spiritual aspects of water, 40 reflects upon the relevant period of time needed for one's spiritual cleansing. This cleansing concept parallels the flood story in the book of Genesis, where the earth flooded for 40 days and 40 nights. According to the story, the waters covered the entire face of the earth, just as if it had experienced a large-scale baptism. 
Depicted within this card, the man is seen hanging from a tree, upside down. Oddly, there are rays of enlightenment surrounding his head, 37 to be exact. The number 37 is significant in the tarot as well as Kabbalah because it is the same gematria number value for the word Chokmah, interestingly due to the fact that this card is placed at Chokmah in the key. Chokmah means wisdom, therefore what we see portrayed here is the man having to endure a learning experience or life lesson, albeit one dealt with trial and error. Notice the tree this man is hanging from is the shape of the letter T. This represents the Hebrew letter Tav, which is related to truth, as well as being associated with Saturn. Thusly, the man is uncovering truths about himself and learning life lessons, as he endures Saturn's karmic influences. Saturn being the planet of karma, frustration and restriction, teaches us life lessons. Saturn is also the lord of time. But Saturn is not wholly malefic maleficent. Saturn is also the planet that grants wishes. The challenges and obstacles Saturn faces you with are meant to help you to learn to grow and overcome weaknesses, thus making you a stronger person in every sense of the word. Saturn wants you to receive whatever you desire, but you must earn it first. We see here portrayed through symbolism the hanged man radiating a brilliant idea and wishing to manifest it. Although before his wish is granted, he must first submit to a series of Saturn's, Saturn's tests. As the old adage goes, be careful what you wish for. The idea of learning how to surrender to the voice of God and to the will of the Creator is symbolized by the shape of the hanged man's arms and legs. With closer examination, you will notice that the man forms an alchemical symbol for, the, for sulfur, which is symbolic for the human soul in spiritual alchemy. The hanged man's soul is represented here as being at peace. He has learned to float on top of water, so to speak, by surrendering to life's flow, which leads him to closer fulfilling his wish. By working towards his goal little by little each day, he remains within the flow and builds a momentum. With time, all the challenges, frustrations and obstacles he is faced with along the way won't seem so bad. Nothing can crush his soul. Instead of struggling to tread water, he learns to float. He allows the tide of the subconscious, which is now connected to the light, to take him in its flow. He learns to let go and surrender. The Hanged Man card is about realising how the wish-making process works and accepting the challenges that come your way. Know that what we receive, everything we ask for, but it is up to us to overcome the life challenges thrown at us in order to, for us to earn our desire. This prevents us from gaining a sense of entitlement. By remaining focused on the reason of why you wish to achieve the intended goal, will be the fuel needed to endure many of the inconveniences experienced along the way. The world. The third card included in this key is the world. It is placed in the third position with the Sephira Bina. The world card and Bina are both assigned to the planet Saturn. The world card is associated with accomplishing a strong sense of certainty and obtaining a higher degree of self-realization. The large laurel with wreath symbolizes an award given once a person graduates from the higher degree of understanding. The wreath can also symbolize a womb which gives birth to a new phase or new beginning, a chapter in one's life. This womb can also represent the opening of a portal into the astral realm, allowing one to draw down the seed of their desire from the macrocosm with the intention of manifesting it into the material world. The world card is assigned to the Hebrew letter Tav, which means truth, as well as cross, sign or mark of the cross. This can relate to the portal that our desire crosses over into the material realm. Interesting to note that the folded up cross forms a cube resembling the six-sided cube of Saturn. Opening like a gift box, the cube unfolds and offers up its prize. Big dreams take big imagination. 
You must truly think outside the box. Tav is the last letter in the alphabet, and bearing that in mind, the world card being assigned to the letter Tav alludes to the idea of the end of the world, which biblically is associated with the apocalypse. The word apocalypse literally means the uncovering and relates to the uncovering of hidden truths. This being said, it is imperative to search within your own soul and uncover hidden truths. Try to find the real reason for why you desire a certain goal. For example, a person's why may include freedom. Freedom can be a primary motivator, both professionally and personally. The world card placed at Binar is about crossing through the portal and into the realm of endless possibilities. The Wheel of Fortune The fourth card on the key is the Wheel of Fortune, connected to Jupiter and assigned to the Sephira Chesed. Jupiter is known as the Guru and teaches mental powers, oneness and sight of science and light. This card is a big wheel illustrated on it and the centre of the wheel is a large X, which is the planetary seal for Jupiter. The sigil is designed in such a manner that its traced lines touch every number or unit square of that planet's Kamiya, or magic square. It symbolises the governing force of the planet. So we also have a diagram here uh, illustrating each row and column contains four numbers. The square contains 16 numbers from 1 to 16. Each row, column and diagonal adds up to 34 and all of the numbers in the square add up to 136. This is the Kamiya of Jupiter and planetary sigils. Pictured was the 4x4 four four magic square of Jupiter. The planetary symbol for Jupiter looks like the number 4. Jupiter is connected to the number 4 and that is why the symbols on the card are in groups of 4s. Firstly, there are four alchemical symbols which form a cross at the four points of direction, north, south, east and west, shown overlapping the large cross of Jupiter's sigil in the centre of the wheel. Next, there are four alchemical alchemicals on the cross, mercury, sulphur, water, and salt. Then when you have the four letters of the word tarot, which can be spelled backwards and forward as Torah or Rota, surrounding the wheel. There is also the tetragrammaton placed alongside the word tarot, and the tetragrammaton being the divine four-letter name of God, yod heh vau -Hey. And then, located at each of the four corners, are the four fixed faces of God, which are associated with the four fixed signs of the zodiac. And they are, from clockwise, starting from left and going to right, the man who is Aquarius, the eagle is Scorpio, the lion is Leo, and the bull is Taurus. The four books that each of the four faces of God are holding relate to the Old Testament's four main sections. The Pentateuch, the former prophets or historical books, the writings, and the latter prophets. The energy and influence of Jupiter is one of mercy, blessings, divine guidance, and most importantly, gifts of knowledge. According to Hindu teachings, Jupiter is Brahim and a teacher of deities considered as Devata. Here, Devata means mind, whose mind is always in ascending mode. Here in the Wheel of Fortune card, Jupiter gives the knowledge of how your mind can go in ascending mode. This is why the four faces in each corner are studying books. The word Torah means the law, is found and written around the wheel, as well as the Tetragrammaton, which translates as God created. Initiates study the world that God created and see how and everything in it is made up of all the same essence and realise that everything is connected. As above, so below. Such things as well as the yearly seasons and cycles are learnt from studying the Torah. Another group of four found on the Wheel of Fortune card are the alchemical symbols connected with the four phases as soul cycles through towards enlightenment. 
For instance, to the left of the center wheel is the serpent. Serpents throughout the tarot always relate to and symbolize the Kundalini. The Kundalini here is a clue that we can raise our Kundalini chakras by way of Gnosis. Obtaining Gnosis gets the wheel turning inside of us and elevates our vibration as we ascend up towards the crown chakra, where we reach enlightenment, obtain a broader sense of spiritual awareness, and open up the third eye. The Wheel of Fortune card is all about raising your Kundalini by way of Gnosis and opening your third eye. This is the way to elevate your consciousness through the fourth Sephira, Hesed, leading you through the abyss on your way to reaching Bina, which is where the portal, depicted as a wreath in the world card, is located. The wreath being symbolic of the portal to the upper worlds and a direct connection to Saturn. The next symbol in the group is the dog-headed creature hanging on the side of the wheel known as Anubis, who was the, who is the Egyptian god that guides the recently deceased souls through the underworld and helps them along their way into the afterlife. The Anubis is seen here guiding your soul upward and ascending through the chakras of the Kundalini. The next symbol here is the Sphinx, who firmly sits on top of the wheel. The Sphinx acts as a beacon that guides one's soul in the right direction similar to how a lighthouse would guide a sailor in the night. At the same time, the Sphinx sets an example for what you should strive to become. The, sink, the Sphinx is the elevated soul, holding the sword which represents spirit, having the body of a lion representing strong body, with a human head representing that he has a human soul. The Sphinx is a balanced combination of body soul, body and spirit fixed firmly on the top of the wheel, like the North Star navigating the way and paving the path for each traveller's journey. The last one included of these four creatures or bodies is you, the self. You are the final piece to the puzzle. In total, this is the serpent, the sphinx and the Anubis and then you. You see, you, the self, is the mind the serpent is the body, the sphinx is the spirit, and the Anubis is the soul, which are all attributed to the four main aspects of an individual that work together to guide them in the path of life. Moreover, these four bodies also coincide with the four alchemical properties illustrated on the wheel, which are mercury, mind, salt, body, water, spirit, and sulfur, soul. With further examination, you will notice that in the very centre of the wheel is a tiny cog, which has eight spokes that form eight pi pieces. The number eight connects to the Sephira Hod, which is associated with Mercury, Hermes or Toth. Hod also has to do with splendour of the intellectual mind. Hod as Mercury teaches us to pay attention to the small details. We must look further into things in order to grasp deeper insights that may be staring us directly in the face. For instance, the Roman numeral of the card is X with the value of 10. After already seeing that there are objects or symbols in the card that are in groups of fours, we must write them all down and make a list of them in order to get a broader understanding of their significance. The Roman numeral X at the top of the card lets us know that there are 10 groups of fours. This gives us a total of 40 items. As you know, the significance of the number 40 has with the tarot and in reference to reaching a certain degree of spiritual awareness and understanding. And these 10 groups of four are the four faces of God, which are assigned to the four fixed signs of the zodiac, Aquarius, Scorpio, Taurus and Leo. The four bodies are also known as the four main aspects of the individual, the physical, emotional, spiritual and mental body. These four bodies are symbolized and associated with the Kundalini, serpent, the Anubis, the Sphinx and the mind of the tarot practitioner. The four letters that spell rota or the wheel 
the four letters that spell Torah, law, and the four letters that spell tarot, wheel of law. The four alchemical symbols, mercury, sulfur, water, and salt. The four books that which contain the four faces of God are holding. The Old Testament contains four main sections. The Pentateuch, the former prophets, or historical books, the writings, and the four latter prophets. The four directions of the cross, north, south, east, and west. The four letters of the Tetragrammaton, yod heh vau or Yahweh, Yehovah. And the four units or points of Jupiter's X that correspond to the planetary sigil of the four unit squares or numbers at each corner of the X in the name Khmer of Jupiter, also known as its magic square. This gives us a total of 40 things, digits or units, found in the card that make up the whole and lead us into deeper under it into a deeper meaning. The number 40 connects to a certain degree of level or time it takes to reach a spiritual cleansing. The time it takes to transform your mind, body, spirit and soul. 40 is a significant number seen throughout the tarot and always associates with reaching a higher level of understanding by way of spiritual growth. 40 is a measurement of time according to its spiritual context and this concept of time is relative. Something worth mentioning is that 40 times 34, the number of Jupiter's square, is 1360. The sum of all these digits in Jupiter's magic square equals 136. So here we are seen to see an even deeper connection to Jupiter and the number 40 and how it all relates as a whole. The knowledge that numbers hold certain levels of consciousness is the basis of the Kabbalah which is essentially the spirituality of numbers. And this is all encompassed within the wisdom of the wheel of the, for the wheel of fortune card. The path isn't a straight line, it's a spiral or wheel. You continually come back to the things you thought you understood and see deeper truths. Barry Gillespie Something worth mentioning here as you look for deeper meaning or hidden secrets in the card is that the numerical value yod hey vau hey is 26. Yod is 10, hey is 5, vau is 6, hey is 5. Which is the same value if you add up the number of four astrological houses of each of the fixed signs, also known as the four faces of God, Yahweh. Aquarius is the 11th house, Scorpio the 8th house, Taurus the 2nd house, and Leo is the 5th house. Total 26. The point of finding all these hidden things is to obtain a deeper understanding and to gain a broader knowledge base. The knowledge is the, conne is the connection. Knowledge is the power. And it is through gnosis or knowing that ignites the energy needed to get the wheels turning. The Hebrew letter assigned to this card is Kupf, meaning palm of hand. This relates to a hand offering help to lift you up, just as Ezekiel was lifted up into heaven in his vision and by the hand of God where he saw God's four faces. The Tower. The Tower is associated with Mars and the Sephira Gavura, which influences drive and ambition. Gavura's influence is portrayed in the Tower card with the two people, Adam and Eve, who are both driven to reach the top of the Tower, a metaphor for their Jacob's Ladder, where they will receive, uh, where they will achieve an enlightenment. Once they believe they have reached the top of the tower is the moment they are hit with a bolt of lightning. This causes them to immediately fall back to the ground where they are forced to start over. This scenario is not as bad as it appears. In fact, it's quite the contrary. For instance, the lightning bolt strikes our crown chakra the moment we receive an epiphany. We are granted a brief moment of clarity and understanding. Throughout our lives, we search for truth. 
and there are some things we are led to believe to ring true. And then later as we mature, we may find our beliefs to be false. And these types of realization usually come as a shock and causes us to reassess our character. But as a result, our sense of character grows stronger. Now, with a slight shift in consciousness and by simply changing perception, you can start over. Although this time you'll be not starting over from scratch. This time you'll be rebuilding from experience. The purpose of raising our vibration is to open up our crown chakra. Once opened, we receive new insights that shatter our limiting beliefs. Then we take in this new energy and put it into action. Manifesting our ideas. This concept is the entire philosophy behind the pathwork and Kabbalistic meditation. In Kabbalah, there are 32 paths on the tree of life, and this includes 22 branches that connect the 10 sephira, thereby forming the 32 paths. When you begin to raise your spiritual vibration, you must, you must first start at the base of the tree at Malkut. From here, you draw down the light from the roots of the tree found at Keta, which is at the top crown, drawing down the light from the source, and it traverses along the 22 branches. These 22 branches are represented on the tower card with the 22 yellow yods, which are directly associated with the 22 major arcana. The flow of energy, or the light, that enters one's tree of life, their tower, is drawn from above as if the human vessel was a very large lung. The light that enters can be compared to oxygen that is drawn into the lungs. The oxygen fills the lung and opens up, clears out the capillaries and then exhales the waste, thus allowing more oxygen to enter and expand and heal. Likewise, the light first enters the vessel to clear out the ego, which opens up space for more light to enter. So, the first breath, inhale, exhale, is to clear away ego, blockages surrounding the sephira, and the second breath stimulates the branches, which ultimately raises the kundalini energy and forms a pure channel for the light, a sustained circuitry. It is the connection to the source that supplies one with the breath of life. It is the source of one's joy, fulfillment, and also where one receives epiphanies. Establishing connection to the Creator's light creates a circuit of energy that continues to run up and down your core. It is no coincidence that the tower is associated with Gavura. Both are influenced by Mars and both relate to matters of the ego. The tower card offers us the clues of how to transform our ego by transforming our conscious to be mindfully aware of how we consciously use our words. For instance, the tower card is assigned to the Hebrew letter Pei, meaning mouth. Gavura means strength, severity. Consequently, our words have the strength to either build up or destroy. The secret of the letter pay is that our words begin as our thoughts, and those thoughts have the power to either build ourselves up or they can tear us down. The tower being assigned to pay is also advises us to let go of negative ego blockages, including limiting beliefs, doubt, fear and unworthiness. This includes negative and or limiting thoughts that hold us back from reaching our full potential or prevent us from achieving our destiny. Pay has the gematria value of 80. 80 is the same value of the word Gavura, and also the same value of the word Masike, which means anointed or anointed one. It was used in reference to priests and kings in ancient Israel, who were literally anointed with holy oil, usually when they were set apart to be a religious and or political leader of the people as in a consecration or coronation. These were considered saviors, liberators of people in some way, known as a messiah. The startling revelation of Kabbalah is that each and every person is actually the messiah. The removal of chaos requires a shift in consciousness, which is symbolized by the lightning bolt striking the tower. The awesome light of the Creator is then revealed in its full splendor 
where chaos, the epitome of darkness, simply fades away, but darkness cannot coexist with light. The light of the Creator anoints your crown chakra, and as you speak words of strength, you begin to rebuild your personal tower, your spirit and soul's vibration, anew. This metaphor is a hint that we can use our words to build a our spirits up by saying positive affirmations and by repeating Kabbalistic prayers such as Anna Bacoac. The Anna Bacoac is considered to be the most powerful Kabbalistic prayer containing 42 words which invoke the energy of the Creator. By saying the words out loud, the Anna Bacoac rejuvenates the soul, magnifying the energy of anything you do throughout your day. The sounds created by verbalizing the words have the power to build up and rejuvenate one's soul vibration. This higher level of soul vibrational frequency connects us to and keeps us in tune with the source, which attracts more of the same positive-like energy that shares an affinity with the source and can act as a protective shield against any negative outside forces. Like attracts like. The law of attraction. This is how we build up our spiritual towers. Our words have power. God created the world and the universe with the power of his voice. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 3, it says, And God said, Let there be light. In Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7, God creates life with his breath. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into the nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Hidden within the letter pay is the letter bet, meaning house. The spiritual meaning of this refers to the importance of keeping personal things private. For instance, things that we speak of privately in our home have a tendency to be said in public. Likewise, the things we think about ourselves in our heads have a way of slipping out as well. It is important to keep positive thoughts in our heads and to refrain from judging others harshly because when we allow the wrong or inappropriate things to slip out, it has the potential to cause chaos if we're not careful. Our thoughts and our inner voice become our words and those words become our behaviours. Others judge our behaviour which will, will prove to either make or break our reputation. You can say one wrong thing and ruin an entire relationship that took years to build. It's an imperative to always speak positively to yourself and speak in a positive light. Before you speak to others, think to yourself, am I adding anything? Do not speak bad of yourself, for the warrior within hears your words and is lessened by them. Old Japanese Samurai proverb. The Tower card reminds us that our words have power. Be mindful of both your thoughts and your words, for they have the power to raise your soul's vibration, as well as your spiritual tower. The Sun The Sun card is associated with the Sun and is assigned to the Sephira Tiferet, which is attributed to the inner Sun. Like the Sun, this card contains aspects of regeneration. Furthermore, the Sun card is assigned to the Hebrew letter Resh, meaning head. It suggests the idea that this is the highest path of human intelligence. This is the point of the connection to the human intellect. The Sun is also the Son, S-O-N, Jesus, who carries on the work of his Father, God. Jesus is the Spirit manifest. Jesus is the head of God's household and is always depicted with a bright halo or aureole of light surrounding his head. For instance, this symbolism is seen in the Tarot's Hanged Man card. The Christ's mind is enlightened with the Spirit of God, and then he manifests those intellectual ideas into the world, creating miracles and healing the sick. Christ also taught that the kingdom of God is found within. Christ connects to the inner sun, which is the way he connects to his crown chakra, his higher self, known as the Father. Jesus said the only way to the Father is through him. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the sun, the holy heart chakra, which is associated with Tiferet, which encompasses the emotional aspects of the tree. 
The sun positioned at Tiferet is a composite of the four elements, the signs of the zodiac and all the planets. They are all involved under the rulership of the sun, as is symbolized by the hexagram. The figure, the hexagram, means the perfect integration of personality and higher self. It connects us to its it connects us to our inner sun as we strive towards obtaining adepthood. This is when our head is enlightened with a new intellectual perception of the higher self. A complete success on all levels. Meditate on receiving clarification and a deeper understanding of the intelligence of your mind. Search for what you truly desire and allow that to become your happy thought. And focus your intentions on that one thing. That one positive thought will trump all negative thoughts. Intellectualize your desire and why you have it. Focusing on the end goal will prove to be the energy needed to charge up your inner sun. The reason for rising each day. It will give you a lust for life and sense of purpose. That one single positive thought will allow your core to vibrate radiantly. Opening up your heart chakra, which will raise your spiritual vibration as you ascend towards the crown the father, the intellectual mind located in your head. You will feel as if you too, just like a saint painted on a wall or ceiling of a cathedral, have a halo or an aureole surrounding your head, Resh. The letter Resh has a numerical value of 200, which is directly in the middle of the Hebrew alphabet's numerical system that contains in it numbers valuing 1 to 400. Resh means head and is associated with beginning, the head of the month or head of the year. The letter Resh is spelled out as the word Rosh, as in Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year or the Jewish New Year. Resh is connected to the heart of the first word in the Bible, be Reshet, which means in the beginning. Ergo, the word Resh head is found in the middle of the word Bereshit. The other remaining letters from the word bet, which means house or household. So now we have the word resh, head, inside the word bet, house, head of household. The opening word of the Bible points to the head of the household, and that is Jesus. Jesus is the head of God's household. The first in line Genesis states, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Rosh, meaning head, implies intelligence and thus contains a hidden message that God is intelligence, and that intelligence created all things. The letter Resh is located towards the end of the alphabet, and then we see the letter in the beginning of the Bible, and then we have the numerical value placing the letter inside the middle of the Hebrew alphabet. All this is a clue to the intelligence of Resh is found throughout as well as the center of God's creation. All things spin around it, outwardly from it, and orbiting it, as if it were the sun. We have the power to ignite and regenerate our inner sun by building up a positive ego with a loving heart, improving ourselves so we can achieve our goals and follow our passions, to accomplish what we love, and in return we will improve others, other people's lives by sharing our success and being an example of paving the way for others. We can accomplish anything we set our mind to. Justice. The Justice card is associated with the Sephira Netzach and is connected to the planet Venus. The Hebrew letter Lamed, meaning ox goad or staff, used to prick or poke herd, sheep or cattle, is representing authority in assigned to the card. Lamed is related to Libra, and an air sign of balance and harmony. Nexak means victory, and so too it's associated with aspects of balance and harmony. Lamed is located directly in the middle of the Hebrew alphabet, and it is known as the heart of the alphabet because of its central location. Lamed is the only Hebrew letter that ascends above all the rest. That part that projects above the invisible line of the alphabet is called the tower in the air. This represents the power to ascend, the possibility of relegar or bind to form a union. 
This tower in the air, the upper segment of Lamed, is our hope, as represented or symbolised by the sword in the justice's hand pointing up in the air towards Binah. The sword is pointing up directly at Binah and drawing her energy of understanding and seeing things in the big picture. Like this sword, Lamed reaches up in hope of the possibility to unite with God, to know God, and to know our divine source. The gematria of the letter Lamed is very interesting. Lamed itself represents the value 30, but its constituent parts, Val and Kapf, yield the letter number 26, which is the number value of the tetragrammaton, yod heh vau -Hey. Since Lamed is the central letter in the alphabet and it is raised higher than the rest, it represents yod heh vau -Hey, or the King of Kings. Elevate your thoughts and expand your mind. Be open. Swords represent our thoughts, so elevate your thoughts just like Lamed is elevated and you will connect to God and receive inspiration and deeper insights. See things in the big picture. Lamed oversees all other letters, so as you can have all, so you act as if you have authority. Knowing that your thoughts create your behavior, think above the rest and you will behave above the rest. Temperance. The Temperance card is connected to the Sephira Hod, which is associated with the planet Mercury. The Hebrew letter is assigned to Temperance is Samek, which means to prop up or support. Samek relates to a dwelling, as in creating your human vessel as a temple of dwelling of God. We learn here to build up our life force in order to energize our Kundalini, giving us spiritual support allowing the light of the Creator to enter and fill our vessel and dwell within us. The secret of the Temperance card is that the angel depicted is a combination of two archangels, Raphael and Gabriel, who are both infused with one another here and unite as one. They are a perfect union of fire and water. Raphael represents the sun and Gabriel the moon. Kabbalistically, the sun is symbolic of positive male energy, having an aspect of sharing and giving, and the moon relates to negative female energy of a more passive and receiving nature. This angel focuses on the energy of magical balance and com controlling the ebb and flow of the mixing of energies of fire and water with each other. Back and forth these between two vessels. The angel mixes water, emotions and feelings into fire, sexual drive, ambition, impulses, and then recycles the fire back into the water. The process involves an inner manipulation of powerful spiritual energies. The sexual energy of a person known as life force can be controlled through meditation, elevating the soul's vibration to eventually reaching a spiritual orgasm. The life force energy can bring both ecstasy and enlightenment. What happens is the establishment of a rhythmic masturbatory motion of inner energy. The mental control of this energy is conscious manipulation. By It's symbolized by the interchange of fire and water, depicted by the interchange of fluids between the two vases. The key to this actually simple process is the infinity symbol, the figure eight which Pamela uses above the figure of the magician, or above the Virgin's head in the strength card. It is ebb and flow which is confined or is within the very specific parameters by which is taken either direction at will. As one changes the rate of vibration of this inner energy, one raises the level of consciousness, that is, moves from chakra to chakra or up the branches of the tree of life within. It's all about controlling the inner alchemic, alchemical process of mixing the energies within. The mental control over the ebb and flow of sexual and emotional energies, churning the energy back and forth, to and fro, as it creates a stronger vibration empowering the chakras, as it ascends up the spinal column, kundalini, rhythmically blinding, generating and changing the life force. The longer you hold it in, the more it builds up and then it has the potential to become your superpower, utilizing your willpower to exert mind over matter. 
Your sexual energy and emotions are the fuel you needed to power your mind. The Devil The Devil card is assigned to the Sephira Yesod in this key for a handful of different specific reasons. For one, the fact that this card is associated with the holiday of Tu Bishabat, which, convert, which occurs during a full moon on the 15th day of the month of Shebat. This is significant because the moon rules over Yesod and the moon always reveals secrets that are hidden in plain sight. The biggest hidden secret in this card is there's a Kundalini serpent camouflaged inside the devil's groin. Also hidden within this card is a concealed seal of Saturn. Saturn is the god of time and one of the esoteric titles for the devil card happens to be the child of the forces of time. The seal of Saturn is revealed when you draw a line connecting all the figures' heads and another line connecting all the devil's hands that coincide with the Bikrat Kohanim priestly blessing. This includes the devil's bat feet as well as the bat hand. And lastly, this includes the devil's human hand, which forms the Shin Shaddai hand gesture. These lines form two overlapping Vs, which form two Xs together, side by side, XX, which then creates a diamond in the center of the card, locate, located directly over the devil's groin. Hidden inside the lower half of his diamond is a serpent substituted in place of the devil's phallus. One thing about the diamond is that it acts as a portal or gateway from the astral plane into the material world of Malkut. Similar to the womb symbol, the vesica Pisces is a rhombus diamond and acts as a portal birthing our desire. Such a portal can allow a desire to manifest rather quickly and bypass the restriction of time. Manifesting wishes like magic. Yesod provides the bridge into the portal, acting as the chute that funnels desire from Binah down into Malkut, the manifest. Something interesting to mention here is the significance of the drawing of the lines that connect the head and hands, making out the seal of Saturn. The Hebrew letter meaning head is Resh, with a value of 200. There are three heads depicted in this card. And three times 200 equals 600. Now count the number of hands, which include counting the devil's bat hands and feet hands. The devil is depicted as half man, half animal, which should be taken into account when adding up the number of his bat hands, which there are four, and directly relate to his animal nature. This includes his bat hand and his two bat feet and are technically a bat's hands. The Hebrew letter Yod means hand and has a value of 10. 4 times 10 hands equals 40. So now we have a total of 640. And then we have the value of the four points of the pentagram, which are associated with yod heh vau -Hey, and have a value of 26. Found within the four points of the pentagram, not including the inverted point located at the top of the devil's third eye, which represents the convergence of the letter Shin with the third eye. These four points, which stick out from the devil's head, directly relate to the four elements, fire, water, air and earth. The fifth point assigned to the devil's third eye represents spirit and the union the devil forms with spirit by way of the third eye thus symbolizing that combination of head, eye and spirit are one. Now add up all the numbers and you get 600 plus 40 plus 26 equals 666, which also is the sum of all the numbers in the square of the sun, which is connected to the Sephira Tiferet, associated with the heart chakra. When the heart chakra is opened up, it acts as the key that connects one to the crown chakra, Keta where one obtains Christ consciousness and experience the at-oneness with God. Tiferet, or heart chakra, is associated with the Christ within, known as the sacred heart. Christ said that the only way to the Father, crown chakra or Keta, was through him. You must open up your heart in order to open up the third eye and connect to the higher self. So here we have the secret unveiled that the devil is both the tempter and the redeemer. 
Furthermore, 666 or 6 plus 6 plus 6 equals 18 and then reduced equals 9, which is the number of the Sephira Yesod. What is more, the value of the magic square of Saturn is 45 and the seal of Saturn, also known as the seal of Zazel, is found within Saturn's magic square. And the Hebrew gematria value of the word Zazel is 45 and then reduced to 4 plus 5 is 9, which is yes odd. Also, when looking at the Kondalini as a, word, as a whole, with all 10 cards laid out in their correct positions, the bottom five cards above Malkut in the astral plane form an inverted pentagram, just as the same as the one in the Devil's Third Eye. This includes the Sephira 9, 8, 7, 5 and 4, and when you add up the numbers of the Sephira that correspond to these five cards, you get 33, which is the number that represents Christ consciousness. This is because there are 32 paths on the Tree of Life leading up towards Keta. And once you pass Keta, you reach the 33rd degree or level of conscious awareness referred to as the Christ consciousness. At this level is where the person is truly at one with God. Yesod is associated with the sex chakra and reproductive organs. Zazel's seal forms a diamond that is actually two triangles on top of each other. Similar to the Vesica Pisces symbol, the lower triangle pointing downward, known as the feminine triangle, is perfectly formed around the devil's groin area. Here we unveil a hidden serpent phallus. The snake or serpent represents the kundalini, and it being symbolically located here as the devil's phallus, we are given a clue that it is his sexual energy which fuels his life force, which raises the kundalini and opens up the third eye. The devil's third eye has an inverted pentagram over it, symbolizing that by opening up the third eye, one can draw down desire from the macrocosm and manifest it into the microcosm. In other words, manifesting and birthing your thoughts into reality. The Hebrew letter assigned to the devil card is Ayin, which means I. It can also stand for salvation, as in salvation from ignorance once enlightened, which connects to the letter Shin, which has a connection with the name of Christ, Yeshua, meaning salvation as well. The four-letter name of God is yod heh vav and when you add the letter Shin in the middle, you get the divine name of Christ, Yeshua. Therefore, opening up your third eye allows you to obtain Christ consciousness and redeem salvation. Moreover, the numerical value of Ayin is 70. The full spelling of the word has the value of 130. The pentagram represents the life force, which is yod heh vav and yod heh vav -Heh's value is 26, and 26 times 5, the 5 points on the pentagram, equals 130, which is the value of the word ayin, which means salvation. Whereas the name Yeshua attributed to the pentagram also means salvation. So, by using your life force, you're able to open up your third eye, where you can obtain Christ consciousness, and then are able to connect to and form a union with God's intelligence. The devil card contains one of the greatest mysteries of the Kabbalah, which is the devil, and is necessary means of reaching the Christ consciousness of Tiferet. The devil is both the tempter and the redeemer. He is also described as the prince of the air including indicating that this energy of meditating in the flow of astral currents, this air is to be understood here at the whole of Yetzira, also known as Zia and Pin, located in the astral plane, which controls the ebb and flow of matter, further reinstating the Devil's Card esoteric title, the Lord of the Gates of Matter. May I conclude this card's description by reiterating the intention for its meditation, that Yesod is the gateway from the astral plane down into Malkut. Yesod acts as a funnel that all the conscious energy and life force flows through from desire to the manifest. That desire is captured through the opening of the third eye by communicating with the highest self. 
The Star. The star card is assigned to the Sephira Malkut and is associated with the Hebrew letter Zadi, meaning fishhook. The Zadik, meaning righteous one, meditates, frees their mind, and casts the metaphorical fishhook up into the astral plane of the subconscious in hopes of catching, receiving, or attracting inspiration and godly insights. They attempt to obtain a deeper core understanding of all things. A Zadik, is considered one who is in a constant communication with God. Moses was considered a Zadik. The Virgin Maiden depicted in the card is a pure channel for the light, seen dipping her vessels into the astral waters and pouring it into the land to nurture the earth. The Virgin symbolizes perfection of the physical form of nature. To be a Zadik is to be on the path of initiation and one who strives to ascend spiritually. The seven white stars in the background represent the seven chakras of the Kundalini, which are illustrated here, elevated and vibrating harmoniously, suggesting the Virgin has reached this higher level of awareness, where she feels as though she is at one with nature. The star card is connected astrologically to Aquarius, who is the water bearer, which holds relevance to Zadi, fish hook. The virgin fishes with her vessel, dipping it into the astral waters. Coincidentally, Aquarius is attributed to the practice of meditation, which is essentially the main aspect of the star card. As we meditate, our heads, in a way, are like antennas or perhaps fish hooks, tuning in, aligning with and sharing an affinity with the frequency of God's intelligence. We tap into the higher dimensions of the collective unconscious. The bird in the tree is a scarlet ibis, which has a fish hook for its beak. The ibis represents the Egyptian god Toth, who is usually uh, depicted as having the head of an ibis. The eight stars in the card connect to the eighth sephira, Hod, which is directly associated with Mercury as Toth or Hermes. While meditating on this card, strive to be like Toth, connect to or channel Toth's energy as you fish, just like the ibis, into the astral waters of the subconscious as well as the collective unconscious. Open-minded, lacking ego, letting go of limiting beliefs and enlightening all the seven chakras in order to elevate your soul's vibration so as to draw down and bring forth prosperity into your life. A Zadik remains in a constant conscious state of meditation and is a pure channel for the light. Their Kundalini ascends up the spinal column to Keta where they receive a spark of God's intelligence. And like a bulk of lightning striking a pool of water, the energy of 100% certainty is jolted through the Zadik's body from the righteous one's head down to their feet into the realm of Malkut. Now they know for sure, without a doubt and with 100% certainty, what needs to be done in order to manifest those divine insights they received. As a channel, the Zadik receives in order to share. They know that by sharing their light, they will in return receive more light. And they understand the more light they give, the more they will receive. This is the secret to having prosperity in the world of Malkut. The Zadok is selfless, egoless, honest, open, and always looking for new opportunities to share. This world is a paradox. In order to receive what you want, you must give what you don't have, although you get what you give. For example, if you want money, you give give someone your time. If you want respect, you give others respect. If you want a job, you help others to find work. If you want compliments, you give others compliments, and so on. The first key, the Kundalini key, reveals the steps of the guided meditation needed to order to raise the the chakras and connects to the Christ consciousness, the state of mind that vibrates the same frequency of the one divine source of pure light. This higher awareness is needed in order to wield the second key, the prosperity key. 
Here's a breakdown of the guided meditation for the Kundalini key in its 10 steps. Which work backward from Malkut up to Keta? The paradox concept in practice, as we meditate, we must start at Malkut and work our way up the inner spiritual tree of life towards Keta, which houses the source of light. We work our way from the bottom to the top as we raise the Kundalini, while drawing down light from the upper worlds of Keta. Step 1. The Star at Malkut Become like Toth and cast your fish hook into the astral waters of the subconscious mind. As you breathe deeply, focus on triggering the initiation of the seven chakras. Step 2. The Devil at Yesod Focus on your sexual energy, life force, to be the fuel that ignites the spark of energy needed to get the inner wheels or sephiro and chakras turning. Transform the will to receive pleasure from the self alone into a positive intention of receiving light in order to benefit others, thus becoming a channel for the light. Step 3. Temperance at Hod. Control the spiritual alchemy process, the ebb and flow of sexual drive and emotional feelings, churning around and around in a circular spiral and gaining strength. As they pick up momentum, becoming the energy each of the Sephiro feeds on for their source of power. Like music that starts out slow and then gradually intensifies and additional instruments to join in and create one harmonious and steady rhythm. Visualize how your actions bring others, bring joy to others. Feel the warmth that you receive when seeing the happiness you provide. Step 4. Justice at Netzach. Raise your mental sword high up into the air like a lightning rod attracting the electricity, drawing down the intelligence of God and connecting to, being one with, binding a union with the divine. Source. Unite your consciousness with the source existing in the 99% astral realm in order to become a channel for the source who uses you as a conduit to create more vessels and more channels in the 1% material world. Step 5. The Sun at Tiferet. Strive to reach adepthood. Imagine your head enlightened and united with a new intellectual higher self. Feel your third eye tingle as well as the back of your head. The optical lobe. Your inner sun will begin to radiate as you become centred. Step 6. The Tower at Gavura. Allow your limiting beliefs to be rocked and challenged. Break free of mental bondage and take back your power. Be open to receiving an epiphany from the small still voice of the Creator, which will bring forth godly insights and guidance, revealing to you the next steps for you to take. Cultivate good thoughts and remain positive. Think of blessings and you will attract blessings. It is encouraged to say a Kabbalistic prayer such as the Anabakoic or repeat mantras and or state positive affirmations. Step 7. Wheel of Fortune at Hesed. Connect to and recall your own personal level of gnosis. That knowledge is the source of power needed to kick the process into high gear. By connecting the dots and discovering new as well as re-establishing previous realizations, that you know to be true, and being able to be to see the big picture, seeing how everything is connected. This will cause sparks to go off, which is just the thing needed to raise the Kundalini through the abyss to the next level, where the portal to the third eye is located, the world card. Your accumulated learned knowledge is your source of power you plunge into in order to get those wheels turning in an ascending mode. Step 8. The World at Binar Focus on the large wreath depicted in this card. The wreath represents the womb, or the portal gateway, leading to where you plant your seed, also known as your desire, and also acts as the portal, turnstool, from which your desire is birthed from. The wreath is symbolic of the Vesica Pisces, as well as the diamond in the seal of Saturn. 
It is the third eye, your sixth sense, the gateway into the astral dimension. Step 9. The Hanged Man at Hokma. But the attitude of faith is to let go and become open to truth, whatever it might turn out to be. Alan Watts Let go and allow yourself to float as the sea of your subconscious takes you where you need to be. You must surrender to the flow of the current. Focus on the end result and have faith that will all come to pass. Focus on what you need to gain or what you will gain instead of what you will have to give up. Envisage the end result as if it's already happened. The brain does not know the difference of what is real and what is not. The brain believes that you have that your envisaged imagination is real. Therefore, your dreams become possible to obtain. It is as though you are implanting a memory and your brain believes it to have already happened. And this is how you plant seeds of prosperity. As long as you put forth action towards achieving your vision, your brain will work effortlessly to connect the cause with the effect. This is the law of attraction working in your favor. This future envisaged goal is promised to you as long as you put forth the effort to earn it. This knowledge of universal laws and knowing how the game works is the reason the hanged man's head is radiating with light. The man in the card is at ease with rest assured that his dream will become a reality one day and that this is the happy thought that gives him the strength and, severi and serenity to endure any challenges and all obstacles that life places before him. Step 10. Judgment at Keta. A calling to you to rise up and embrace a higher level of consciousness for the service of your higher good. You are experiencing a spiritual awakening and realizing that you are destined for so much more. This is your cosmic up leveling. Time to tune in to a higher frequency, let go of your old self and step into this newer version of who you are evolving into. And closer to who you are really on who you really are on a soul level which is a pure channel of light for the creator connect to a blend of intuition and intellect trust the inspired ideas that you receive and have absolute certainty that your first thought is the right one Knowing that the first idea that pops into your head is given to you directly from the Creator, thus the first idea or thought is pure, having not let being judged by the ego. The gift of mental power confirms, comes from God, the Divine Being, and if we concentrate our minds on the truth, we become in tune with this great power. Nikola Tesla That concludes part one of chapter 19. It is a very long chapter, so I will divide the video into two parts and part two will be following in the playlist. So this concludes part one of chapter 19, the tarot decoded Raziel's interpretation, new extended edition by Grant Isaac. My name's Renee. Thank you for listening. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Make sure you hit the all button or the all bell so you won't miss when I upload next. If you'd like a personal reading, please visit my website, newangeltarot.com. And if you'd like to learn more about tarot from me, please also visit my website, newangeltarot.com forward slash academy. There you will find your curriculum as well as seasonal Zooms. Until next time, thanks for listening.